So, Aaron, welcome. Um, Thank you. It's an honor. Well, for me as well. Um, we've we've gone, let's say, a long time back, and it's a real pleasure to uh, to have you uh, on the show. Right, so, my right. first question, Arend, is uh, for me, you are the prototype of a management consultant. You're reflective, you scan below the surface, you ask probing questions, um, you find common ground with clients. Why did you decide to uh, choose to uh, become a management consultant? Why did you uh, choose that as a profession? Hmm. Um, well, to be honest, I wanted to be a doctor. <laughs> yeah <laughs> but well you know how this works in the netherlands is uh, they, they draw lots and uh, well uh, it was not my lucky day uh, so i didn't i wasn't able to do that study um and then i i went to uh, uh, to the university to uh, psychology and um actually um well the way i work in uh, in organizations is it's a kind of being a doctor um trying to find where we um where it doesn't work and where we can recover things and um uh, and also maybe that's a more modern approach of uh, of medicines um how can we create a healthy um a healthy way of living and actually uh, that's what i often do in in organizations so we don't don't know only go there and not only invite it when there are problems but also when we want to develop to a next level and um mm -hmm. well i think that's yes and there's a yes now, now i'm thinking i think there's also a personal side of it and that is um well actually i think uh, my personality is that i'm i'm the best uh at the edge of a group. So um, when I have space and can look at things. Um, so I think also for my personality, it's, uh, it works better to be a, a consultant position than in the heath of the, uh, of actually of the company and where it happens. Yes. So, so it's taking care of, of well-being, uh, let's say from, uh, from a well-observed distance almost. Yes, yes, <laughs> that's a good summary indeed, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Aaron, the fact that you never managed a large organization yourself never stops you from uh, becoming highly effective in advising large organizations. Um, where do you contribute your success to in implementing changes in large organizations, despite lacking the uh, the hands-on experience of uh, of managing them? Yes. Well, I think uh, my success uh, is based on, on not having experience uh, myself uh, as the manager. Um, because well, I sometimes work with consultants who used to be managers. And sometimes they're very, very effective. Let's, let's, let's be fair about that. But the pitfall is that uh, um, uh, from that position, um, you, you advise your clients what you did in the past and um i think it's important to uh, to approach every situation as a unique situation and uh, from uh, different perspectives uh so um from uh, social behavioral perspective and a business administration is pretty etc and um well to be honest um i am uh, particularly uh, active as a psychologist in in in, uh, in, in my work, um, and I've also a background in business administration. But particularly that angle um, is really a profession, and uh, then you need you don't need the the experience. Uh, so, in the same line, a doctor need doesn't need to have experienced all the diseases to be a good uh, doctor. Uh, with a good diagnosis and they can. Yeah, <laughs> preferably not. <laughs> so that's 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 my idea. That it's it's real. It's a profession, and it's not only advising what you did in your uh, in your own experience. Yeah. Hey, Arnold, you and I go a long way back, but at a certain moment, your uh, your professional work and also publications seem to center more and more around change and change management. Um, you also created uh, an entirely new company around this, uh, this theme called uh, the Change Studio. Where does your fascination for change, change management and, and leadership stem from? Um, well, to be honest, um, I'm not that interested 
interested in making change plans, rolling out systems and structures. Um, I did it and I sometimes do it, but it's not my fascination. Um, I'm particularly fascinated in the behavior, which is often the reason why a change processes are very effective or not. Um, so what I really find interesting is when I'm working, for example, with a board, and while we're talking about the change plans uh, at the table, um, they are showing behavior that makes or breaks the change. So, for example, what I really find fascinating, if, 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 if the subject of the meeting is, well, there is so much resistance and, uh, well, when there seems to be a, a disconnectedness, etc. Uh, and, well, actually, they, the, the, the pitfall is that the solution is more quick fix. So uh, we need to make better plans and uh, new procedures and uh, we, we need to convince them more. Uh, whereas what I see at the table is that nobody um, uh, listens to uh, uh, the, the other colleagues. Nobody asks questions. Nobody is curious about where someone is coming from, from uh, when he has a, a, another uh, perspective. So actually, um, everything that we need to understand in the process, why there is resistance and uh, people are, uh, get disconnected, it's happening here at the table. What I like is much more uh, uh, working with with these processes and reflect uh, uh, help managers to reflect upon how they contribute uh, to the change or block the change, rather that than uh, helping them to make better plans. Yeah, yeah, and perhaps that's also yes. a nice uh, nice segue to uh, to my next question. I mean. As you know, I was deeply, deeply impressed with your book, uh, Break the Cycle, and could recommend all listeners and viewers to uh, to read it. It really opened my eyes. Mm -hmm. And and the core theme Thank of this you. book is that um, our dominant way of dealing with change management issues is, is one of the thinking initiating leaders on the one hand and the reactive and dependent employees on the other. And, and this leads to the classic approach where leaders are responsible for designing and initiating the changes and rolling these out across the dependent employees in their organizations. Can, can you explain why this model often, uh, so often leads to failure? Yes. Yes, it's actually the, the pitfall of um, ingrained beliefs and uh, related to change management, there are a lot of ingrained beliefs in a lot of uh, companies. So uh, typical ingrained beliefs are um, uh, management has to start. So actually, there's a, a, um, a belief behind that. Uh, that is, uh, well, employees wouldn't do anything by themselves that, that leads to change. Uh, we have to start. And we have to make plans. Uh, they will probably uh, show up resistance, etc. It's all these. Take a yeah. classical book on change management. There's always a chapter on uh, dealing resistance. Um, yeah. yeah, correct. Yeah, and I think yeah. that's yes, that's that's very dangerous because how many managers uh, have read these kind of books? Um, and actually have this strong belief just before uh, they are going to a meeting yeah. uh, and they have in their he head, well, they are going to show up resistance. Well, what does it with these managers? They are going to be firm and uh, sending yeah. and selling <laughs> and yeah. it's going to be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. Um, so, um, and all these beliefs are self-fulfilling prophecies. If we think up front, they will show up resistance. We are going to show behavior that leads to resistance and yeah. if we think up front we need need to make plans because the, well they won't won't take any initiative by themselves well they probably you probably got right because uh with all these plans well they are not very motivated anymore to come up with own ideas um so that's actually the the danger of of these kind of um self uh th these beliefs that lead to to circular patterns and um well uh, also to self-fulfilling prophecies that is what happens 
Yeah, because one of the pictures uh, in your book, Break the Cycle, that, that made a very, very deep impression of me, and I, I, I also immediately got it, is that you said, well, one of the most powerful remedies um, uh, or techniques you can apply is to take a picture with a self-timer so that you're also in the picture. And and I think that's a very powerful analogy because I often found myself as a consultant or uh, or expert next to a business leaders. And then we, you know, kind of con- condescendingly looked at the crowd that despite our best effort, um, yeah. didn't get it yet or hadn't got it yet. Um, yes. So how can taking a picture which includes yourself as part of the problem and therefore probably also as the solution help you as a leader to move a change forward? Um, well, the, the the main point is that um, well, it relates to what I just uh, described regarding these circular patterns, right? So as long as I only see that um, uh, they do something stupid or they don't take initiative or or they don't, don't, they don't take responsibility, so I have to be the solution. That's the yeah. reason that I'm <laughs> so in control, for example. Um, as long as you only see that part, uh, you will you will never solve it because uh, the only thing that you would do is uh, well showing this behavior time after time because well that's your solution in your head and um, making a picture that includes yourself actually uh, means asking the question uh, what do I do that stimulates their behavior um, so if I see that show they they don't take initiative. Um, don't try to get in this first inclination that is, uh, well, I have to say them that they should take initiative, but first ask the question, what do I do that stimulates this behavior? And um, if you know, uh, uh, if you have a sincere answer on that, and the best way is to ask the question well, to the people that you're working with, what do I do that stimulates you to show this behavior? Uh, it's it's a tough question because you don't you don't know what they're going to tell you, right? No, I would so find it very scary. I would find it very scary. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, it's very scary. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Well, to be honest, there I can say it in theory, right? But um, um, for me, it, it, it applies exactly the same. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. for example, if I did a session and I'm sure that it was very successful, well, it's not that difficult to ask. Well, what what, what how do you see my role in this uh, in this session? But what if it was not that successful? If it was very stressful and with a lot of tensions, yeah. um, and then we say, what, what, what do I do that contrib- contributes to this? Well, that's that's absolutely more difficult to ask that question then. But it, I really think it's 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 the only way to break uh, the the situation, to break and, and, and to connect again, because she, and, and and particularly when you do it. Um, um, online so offline means that you go back to your office and you think of oh, well what could be the solution what do I do but online means um, in the session you ask well can, can you explain what do I do that stimulates you to do this and then immediately you recover the the, the connection uh, between yeah. the, them and you and um, because yes the, that's very helpful is my, uh, is my experience but sometimes uh, uncomfortable now yes. and, and and talking about uncomfortable um in your book uh unleash the the change or ontketen the verandering you say that yeah. leaders should be willing to release control if they want to make things happen and at the same time um you know leaders are often afraid to lose control in all honesty present company mm. completely included um I always tend to become really insecure when uh, when my uh, direct reports take too much freedom, uh, especially since you know most of my line managers always kept me responsible for what happened in my remit. Um, so I was always yeah. very relaxed about giving people on me a lot of freedom. However, I was very careful in mount- minding the boundaries because you know at the end of the day I was kept responsible for um, for you know the results they were making. So yes. how, how should leaders deal with this uh, insecurity? Even where uh, should they draw the line between, you know, wh- you know, 
how much control they should uh, you know release or not and and how should they communicate yes. to the teams yes um well you 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 can call it naive but i really believe in um making things de debatable in the open so um it's typically a dilemma and many managers would would recognize uh, uh this dilemma because we we believe often that it's it's valuable to give um space to take yeah. initiative and to stimulate ownership etc yeah. um, and we have this <laughs> this uh well pain in our stomach <laughs> because of in the end of the day we we need to uh, to be a bit a bit in control um, it's a dilemma and um, I think it's it's very helpful to be open about this dilemma. So, for example, uh, if you would say to your team, well, um, I'm actually struggling a bit with this dilemma. Uh, so um, I really find it uh, important to, to, to give you space. Uh, and I really mean it that I, um, I want to stimulate you and give you the space to, to be entrepreneurial and, and show personal leadership. However, um, I need something in order to, be, to have the comfort to, um, to keep you giving this space. So for example, well, I'm, I'm in such a process now with a couple of uh, managers in, uh, and their teams in, uh, in a company where they have their, their conversations with their teams where they actually say, what are these, 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 min what is these minimal set of rules? Yeah. Two, three things that I want to be Actually, it's the, the, the issues or the, the KPIs that I want to be reported on that gives me enough comfort to let to give you the space. Uh, so actually, that is, the, that is the conversation that you have then. So what do I need to have the comfort to give you the space? And uh, what can you give me to help uh, to give me the comfort? Um, uh, having this conversation makes it makes it actually a two way um, uh, Street, well sorry, issue. Yeah. It's not yeah. only your private dilemma, um, yeah, but it's something that we have to. It's actually it's about in, uh, a mutual interaction. And so and and the same applies. For example, sometimes there is this question: uh, Well, how should I motivate my 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 team or motivate my my people but my first question is what is their answer um so it's it's we as managers think that we should have the answer and then apply yeah. it uh, to them and yeah. impose it on them um but it's that's it's what we were hired to do right <laughs> yes indeed yes <laughs> we should do that but why not asking? Well, this is my question. Uh, what what could I do that 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 stimulate that that well, contributes to your motivation? Then let's have a, a, a conversation about it. Um, I always believe in this openness, and sometimes it's it's not very practical because we have to go on, and particularly when there's time pressure and or pressure on the results, etc. Um, well, then the dilemma is more more difficult, but. Actually, I believe in the principle, the fundamental principle of um, being open about these uh, these dilemmas. Yeah, yeah, be because there's there's another um, thought provoking uh, statement in one of your books, which I um, which I found it very interesting. Because in in the same book, you also plead for um, quote unquote creating a sense of belonging instead of quote unquote mm. creating a burning platform. Now. Throughout my career, I always heavily relied on the ladder. I mean, I think I created uh, so many burning platforms that I caused massive fires. Um, but it's not much easier <laughs> to create a burning platform than a sense of belonging. Um, I mean, my, my fear is if there's not a sense of belonging, then you need time to create it. And once you have created the sense of belonging, then really the question is, well, Will people still accept what I see as a kind of, you know, burning platform? So, in other words, is yeah. creating a sense of belonging not doesn't it take an infinite longer time than creating a burning platform? And is the outcome not much more insecure? <laughs> yeah. 
Well, uh, well, let's let's start with this. The, that uh, at at the beginning of a uh, of a change process, uh, I, I always think it's it's important to there should be either a sense of urgency or a sense of belonging, and even better, a combination. If you of have that. both, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, if, yes, indeed. Um, well, there are quite some situations where most well managers say, well, um, actually, uh, people don't uh, um, experience a sense of urgency, uh, uh, nor a sense of belonging. Well, I would say good luck, <laughs> because if, <laughs> it's it's uh, very difficult to to start <laughs> anything without at least one of these uh, these things, um, and and then. Um, uh, in my eyes, there you could distinguish two uh, ways of change, two actually two the types of change. And one is the, uh, it's it's more about um, uh, structures, systems, um, and uh, well, these things we can roll out. But of course, always with a lot of communication and where it's possible to involve people to think about solutions, etc. But at the end of the day, uh, it should be implemented, can be rolled out, and. Particularly for those um, uh, uh, change processes, um, a burning platform can be very helpful. Uh, um, but well, there are quite some companies these days that um, uh, also want to work on. Uh, well, we want a climate uh, where people um, are entrepreneurial, where we think innovative, where there's more creativity, where we empowered. show up. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, indeed. Uh, um, and that you cannot realize with a, a, a sense of urgency, with a burning platform, because then you say, well, you, it's very important that you take initiative yourself now. Um, uh, yes, well, too late. You already gave you the instruction. Um, so then it's important to, 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 um, uh, to select an approach where people uh, somehow can feel that um, uh, what, what is this purpose that we are going for? How could I contribute to that? And how can we um, uh, work together uh, as a team well to create that better um, um, yeah, purpose? It's more a purpose than a goal. And let's be honest. Um, a sense of, of of belonging is also related with a kind of inspiration. Um, maybe uh, there are some colleagues that they even call, uh, talk about not a, a sense of belonging, but a sense of excitement. Um, it's it's another way of um, it's another change, um, and that can be inspirational. Well, it's cool that we are going to work on this. What if we are the first? A team in our company or maybe the first company in our branch that is able to do that um, but well changes regarding a new system or a new structure is seldomly inspirational so then let's uh, let's be fair about that just create a sense of urgency and let's go on with it. let's go on with it <laughs> Super. but at the end of the day try, try to involve people as much as possible because in the end um, well, if if things should be implemented, you need you often need them uh, to uh, to uh, well show energy uh, and to contribute to that. Super. You uh, you recently wrote a book together with uh, Cynthia van der Zwan called uh, the Undertow. Uh, what do you mean yes. by the term uh, undertow in the context of organizations? Yes. Um, well, the undertow is actually all these these things, uh, actually processes, subtle processes that we often cannot grasp, but that who has a major influence on the uh, the change process. For example, um, it is these glances that people uh, exchange in this meeting time after time when we talk about a, a certain subject or um, when a certain person in the meeting uh, uh, brings in his or her opinion um, uh, as a response. Nobody, nobody responds openly, but there are some glances that are uh, exchanged. Um, uh, or this, that, uh, this example where, where people time after time raise 
uh, this this former change processes process of five years ago, where they felt let down, and um, well, it, it's it's still there, and somehow it's it influences time after time um, how we can make pace now in our change process. It's these kind of things that are difficult to grasp, but ha ha uh, uh, that has have a, a major impact on the change process. That's the undertow. So what, what happens if, if leaders ignore the undertow in their organization? Um, well, they, they will um, feel it time after time. Um, so, for example, um, and they will, and I think often they will not uh, really understand what is happening in the team, in the organization. Uh, one concrete example. Um, try to imagine that um, I had a, a manager uh, 10 years ago, and 10 years ago, he actually taught me uh, the profession. I, I, I'm really thankful, for, grateful for all the things that I've learned from him. And uh, well, it's that way how I um, put my profession into practice. And, and he is gone. Uh, eight years ago um, and now I have a new manager um, and there were three uh, in between them uh, and now this new manager says well we're going to do it really really different um, if I say okay we're going to do it in a different way no problem um, I actually I am not um, I'm letting down this former manager um, uh, to whom I'm so grateful for all the things that he taught me. Um, I let his opinion down, his the things that 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 he te he taught me, etc. And I'm probably not even aware of that. But that's the reason that I say, well, this new thing uh, it's going much too fast, and um, uh, I don't understand and. Um, if my manager doesn't understand that and he just thinks, well, he, uh, the guy needs some some extra arguments why this new change is a very good change, um, and we will be disconnected probably for years. And try now, now try to imagine what happens if a whole team uh, had this former manager and was taught in this 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 uh, in this way of working. So it's this is one of the. Um, uh, subjects that's related to this undertow, that is feelings of being loyal to persons often in the past. Yeah. Um, that has a major impact on uh, how our behavior now. And uh, well, well, this book that we that we wrote about this is trying. Um, well, actually, what we're showing is the undertow seems to be very unstructured, but there are some laws in this, uh, in this undertow uh, and that with which we can understand what is happening. Yes. Yeah, because I can, I can recognize that. I mean, I was once asked to, uh, to take a leadership position in an organization that had just gone through, um, through a major acquisition. So you had, you know, people from the original organization, people from the acquired organization, and I thought, well, I'm in a brilliant position because, you know, I'm brand new. I have nothing of the history. So I can also, um, you know, completely ignore the history because, uh, you know, I can start with a blank slate and everyone else can start with a blank slate. Yeah. The difficulty was everyone felt really belonging to either, you know, organization A or organization B. So the fact that yeah. I presented myself yeah. uh, happily as, uh, you know, the leader of organization C, which was, you know, the happy merger. Yes. I was yes. experienced of them of completely ignoring their uh, their history, their past, all the pain that had happened in terms of you know colleagues yes. that had to leave, uh, legacies yes. that had to be deserted. So you're absolutely right. You 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 cannot you know just pretend that you come in and nothing has happened before and um, you start with a blank sheet of paper. Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, it's it's yeah, it's it's a, a very uh, illustrative example that you just uh, yes that you just shared. Um, Arendt, you're a partner of, of one of the most successful consulting uh, boutiques in the Netherlands, and yet you decided at a certain moment to start your own uh, firm completely specialized in change, change management and leadership called the Change Studio. What was your motivation of uh, starting your own enterprise to, to drive 
um, you know, change, change management and leadership. What, what was the reason for that? Yes. Um, well, I, I think uh, that there were a couple of reasons. Um, uh, and uh, none of them is related against uh, uh, the firm that I work because I was uh, 70 years um, yeah. a partner in that. So I, I was that firm. But it was my personal um, um, wish, actually, um, to focus on these two subjects, leadership and change. That's all. So no finance, no marketing. That We don't do that. This is all. And um, I wanted to um, to build on a, a team of, of, of dedicated people who are all fascinated to, uh, by, by, this, by these teams. Of these themes, and uh, so together with my with my companion, I uh, I started the Change Studio, and um, we actually what we do is is change journeys and leadership journeys, and um, uh, so by call it, uh, calling it a journey, we we actually say well it's it's not a plan that we're going to roll out, it's it's a, a step by step approach of experiences, uh, and we always say three words are very important for us: that's lead inspire create uh so that actually um well gives the feeling that how we want to work and um we are strong in the contents but always creative in the forms um a change is often a um well it's often a process that people often do not like change processes if if i if I'm at a party and I need I meet some new people and I say, "Well, I'm I'm a consultant uh, um, specialized in leadership and change," well, suddenly people are enthusiastic because they all had this this terrible experiences with uh, with changes change projects that were rolled out and changed their their lives <laughs> completely. Um, uh, and and I believe, uh, together with my colleague, that that change can be um, inspirational can be an adventure um, and uh, well we, we try to make it adventurous um, uh, uh, journeys change journeys, but also leadership journeys uh, I, I even go literally literally or uh, literally no. literally yeah. literally <laughs> <laughs> Uh, on a uh, uh, on journey with with uh, groups of managers and um, and directors in the nature um uh, and uh, there we talk about the 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 major issues uh, the major dilemmas the major questions for leaders these times and i i really enjoy it mm-hmm. <laughs> i love my work do, do you think there's also a particular type of customer that that finds its way to your studio i mean do they have uh, do they have a certain types of questions a certain orientation uh, different question than other customers. Yes, well, it's it's uh, it's typically the questions that are often related to um, uh, um, th- there should be a behavioral part in it. So if they say we have an ICT plan and help us to implement it, they will never come to us. And well, there are there were some some instances, but then we said, well, there are other companies are uh, that are really much better in that than, than we are. So um, it's uh, it's companies that want to work on the development of their culture, um, where collaboration issues uh, play a part, where they have, um, for example, a new strategy, but find it very difficult um, it, to bring it into practice or want to be inspired. Or um, it's typically those type of questions. Or for example, we have a new strategy, and that really needs needs another. Um, way of leadership and uh, help us to develop that way of leadership and there we go Um, and the interesting thing is that um, it's not a a, a special type of companies or organizations so we have uh, really profit profit driven companies and um, hospitals uh, and um, uh, educational uh, organizations so it's it's I think there is there should be some courage uh, in these uh, in these companies to work with us because yeah. it's not the 
Yeah, the confidence. Then, I, I, I got confident that idea from our meeting. You you need to have, let's say, the courage to to step a little bit outside your comfort zone. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. yes, because otherwise nothing is going to change really in our in our experience. No. Nee, en, en wat ik ook vind fascinerend is, je zei dat het attracts, let's say, clients who are, uh, you know, um, willing to, uh, you know, to to run a certain, um, how do you say, risk or try to to dare the untrodden path. Um, in the meantime, you also get out, let's say, um, a number of of people around you, right, who who work together with you yes. in the stage studio as clients. So, so what type of 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 people? Um, are attracted to working with you and working for the change studio yes well the interesting it started with with um uh, some young people who just came from the university but more and more we are um uh, approached by people who now for example work at one of the the big four uh, uh consultancy for firms who somehow are attracted to, I think, the, the creativity and uh, the way we, we we seek for inspiration and work on inspiration. Um, no standard approaches, but always trying to be uh, creative with a new approach. That that what many young people uh, really like. And the backgrounds are completely different. Most of them are academics, but uh, it's psychologists um, and um, uh, someone with a law uh, uh, background, uh, business administration, IT uh, uh, background. So it's it's really broad. There's one thing that we all have, and um, that's what, what I really find difficult when I select new colleagues, and that is people need to be creative. That's that's really important yeah. if if you are about to be a part of us. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, you have to, yeah, have to have fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I remember that. I mean, I remember at a certain moment of conversation where you basically um, use techniques uh, related to uh, improv uh, theater, um, you know, yes. the, the floor up. Uh, I also saw um, you know, the, the guitar and the piano in um, in the physical space in which you operate. So I, yes. I recognize that element yes. of uh, of creativity. And I think... To be quite honest, I think there's also a sense of authenticity. It's almost creativity, authenticity, and also, let's say, uh, mm. honesty. I, uh, this is a very, very special, no, uh, nice I think, atmosphere hear. that, uh, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, really appeals to me. Hey, the other okay. question is, um, you wrote an extremely thick and profound PhD thesis, uh, moving moments. Mm-hmm. I still have that in a prominent yes. place in my cupboard because you were kind enough to send me a complimentary copy at the time. But I just wondered, you, you were a young father at the time. Um, you were a fully fledged partner in a consulting firm. You were highly successful. So there was nothing to prove with the thesis. Um, you could have spent your time in a million other ways. Why did you decide to pursue such a kind of, you know, tough, difficult, um phd um do you want a professional answer or uh, an honest answer um i prefer the second <laughs> ego ego <laughs> <laughs> ego <laughs> uh, in the end why 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 would you do that why would you yeah. write books it, it's it, there should be something well that's in my case of, of ego that um in this case, in my thesis, I wanted to prove that I'm able to do that. That's the honest uh, answer. Yeah. Yeah. Besides, I was really fascinated by the question. I, 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 it took one year to select the question uh, that I was going to study because I thought, well, if if I'm going to um, well actually spend uh, four to five years of my life to this study, well, it should be. F- I really should should want to know the answer on the question because otherwise uh, I'm not going to make it, and uh, that was very important for me uh, as well. Um, I it really is sub- a subject that that fascinated me. Mm-hmm. Yes, I mean, because you uh, you published a number of uh, of books throughout your uh, your career. Um, what what are the elements? Is is the element? Uh, 
is is it all ego or is it also an element of curiosity uh, is there an, a kind of commercial element is it a mix of both well, why, why why do you keep on yes. writing and publishing yes well it's it's um i'm actually a de- well, it's a bit strange maybe but i'm addicted to development i i i want to develop myself uh, uh, again and again because otherwise I get bored. That's that's my pitfall. That I mm-hmm. that I get yeah. bored too too too, too fast. Um, uh, so that's really a, a, one of the things that I'm uh, that is that is helping me to do this. Um, but besides, it's 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 my actually it's my way of marketing. So it's not my style to call companies uh, if they have. Uh, happen to have a a, a problem that I can <laughs> help them with. Uh, no, I write a lot. I, I talk about it on on conf- conferences, etc. Uh, and as a consequence, um, a companies call us, call me or our colleagues. Uh, I'm not the only one who who has this uh, this this strategy. And um, so my whole professional life, this is the way how I got um, a marvelous, um, well, a set of, yeah. set of interesting um, assignments, projects. And yeah. there's something I think that is, uh, um, finally, that is uh, that my parents were both teachers. And um, uh, in our home, they always talked about um, education, the children, the classes, the teaching, etc. And it was one thing that I thought, and that was, I'm never going to do this. It was too much for me at that age. <laughs> but in the end... Um, yes, I think there is something uh, of my parents in me uh, also related to this. Uh, um, I like to teach, to share my ideas, and uh, I hope people are interested in the, in it. And uh, so there's something in that as well, I guess. Yeah, because that, that would be my final question. But, um, but I also admire is the fact that you uh, still... Um, you know, teach at uh, at universities, uh, for instance, um, and I can fully imagine what students get out of you. But but what do you mm. get out of teaching, and what do you get out of students? Yes, well, the only answer is that that if I uh, lecture, it's all, all always uh, postgraduate education. So mm-hmm. um, my students are managers um, uh, with a lot of experience. Why? Because this this uh, actually may be a bit selfish uh, argument and that is uh, particularly in these situations, I learn a lot of them yeah. uh, as well because they bring in their experiences, uh, sometimes experiences that do not match with uh, but what I teach. Uh, so then we have nice, nice uh, conversations about how can we understand this and it really helps me to sharpen my mind. Um, so that's that that it uh, that is it uh, what it, what it brings me yes. Well, Aaron, thank you. I I really enjoyed this uh, this interview, and I just uh, want to thank you uh, very much. And uh, looking forward to uh, personally connecting with you again soon when I'm in the Netherlands. Thank you, Dirk. Uh, I really li- liked it, and it was again an, an honor to be in your uh, in your uh, uh, show. So uh, look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. Bye. Bye.